In a previous DIY, we built a dining room table and what better way to complete the set by adding in some benches. Now this DIY really is cool, easy and simple for you to do. As for the materials we're going to be using, we're using plain little round pine timber. We've used one length of 1.8 meter, 69 by 69 plain little round pine. We've used two lengths of 2.4 meter long, 69 by 22 millimeters plain little round pine. And we've used a 32 by 305 by 1.8 meters long plain little round pine shelf. Get the guys at Builders to cut all the timber for you as per my cutting list as it's part of their service. When you collect your timber, don't forget the offcuts because we will use those a little bit later on as spaces. In assembling the timber, you'll need some wood glue and some 38 millimeter Craig screws. As for the tools you're going to use, a Craig jig and a cordless drill driver. Now, as you can see, it's quite a large size bench. So if you don't have space in the workshop, you can actually use the bench top as your working surface. Let's get started. Let's move all this stuff out the way. You'll see the two leg sections is made up of the 69 by 69. And we're using two of these as our cross braces, which is gonna join those two legs together. Now, I actually want them sitting slightly elevated. So we're gonna make use of our off cuts. I think I'm just gonna go with two thicknesses high. And that's gonna give me a slight recess on the inside there and another one here. Now we're gonna be using pocket holes and Craig screws to join these guys together. So we're just gonna mark out where I need to drill my pocket holes. We'll go to that side, to that side, to that side. Perfect, okay, slight offset. Just easier to mark up the face so that you don't flip that piece around and make a mistake. Right, we've got two of those to do and we've got two sets of legs so we might as well mark up the next two as well. Right, four pieces of that. Whilst we're gonna be using our Craig jig, we might as well also mark out the positions on our apron. Now, our apron is going into the side of the leg, so we will need two Craig screws on either end. And I'll just go middle, slightly off, happy with that. So I've got evenly spaced Craig screws. They are gonna be hidden, so it doesn't matter if you don't have exact positioning. As long as you have roughly even spacing, then you'll be okay. Now I'm using the K4. You can use any one of the Craig jigs to make your pocket holes. I always find it much easier just to clamp it down on the table, stops it from wandering around. And then we're just gonna drive all the way down. Drill two of our pocket holes. There it is on the underside. And we're gonna do the other side as well. So let's pop that back into position. Now, if you have got an extractor, it is a good idea to attach to the bat. It just draws out all that sawdust and it actually helps prolong the life of the drill bit. But it's a bit noisy to use today, so we're gonna leave it out of the shot. One done, three more to go. So our first four pieces done. Then we'll start on our apron pieces. Okay, concentrate on this bit. Make sure you are drilling on the right side, the same side as the end holes that you've put in. Using the sight lines I put on the top, that's gonna go in there like that. Lock that down. Drive that through. Right, that's the last of our pocket holes done. We're gonna start building the leg section now. Now, it's quite important that you do keep those legs square, um, otherwise your bench is gonna be a bit wonky. So to assist you, I like to actually use the bench top. We'll position our legs right to the end, and the next one's gonna go on the side there. Now, I try to avoid using a tape measure because I always make mistakes. So I know this is 125, that's the distance I want that brace on the bottom here to be from the bottom of the leg. So I'll just turn my legs on the side, that, and we'll just put a quick little mark there. Another mark there. Okay, so now this is where your offcut pieces come in handy. We want these pieces to be sitting kind of near the edge there, but slightly recessed down. You can measure it, try and clamp it into place. It is very difficult. What I like to do, take the offcut pieces, it's two thicknesses of timber, the standard timber that I'm using, 
and I'll just pop those guys in the middle and then they're perfectly elevated to the height that I want. And now you can actually hold those down firm while you drive those screws in or you can make use of a clamp. Always remember, wood glue in between the mating surfaces, pop the screws in and then drive these screws into their positions. And that clamp is keeping everything rigid and everything square as per the original setting of the edge of the bench top. Okay, so that's our first leg. That matches up exactly the same process for the second leg. Now you'll see I've chosen quite a large recess on the outside edge of these legs and a small recess in the front. Ideally, I'd like to have it in the middle, in the middle position to where it would be the strongest. However, I can't get my driver or my drill in at that angle. So that's why I've recessed it back slightly just to make sure that I have enough clearance. Okay, we're now gonna assemble our side pieces onto our legs. Take in our cross piece, make sure we turn it all the way around so that we have our pocket holes on the inside. And I'm gonna recess it slightly from the edge just to improve the look and it's gonna be sitting closer towards the center. Now again, I don't like to use a tape measure, I use a scrap piece of timber. It's the same thickness and that's gonna be my recess in. We'll pop in some wood glue between the mating surfaces and then drive in our Craig screws. That's it, you'll see the one leg is joined onto that side piece. Exactly the same piece for the other side. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing on the other side with the other leg. Okay, there's the bench frame and legs complete. Very simple, easy to do. All we can do now is put some wood glue along that full perimeter of that apron and on the bottom of the legs and then position it in the middle of the board and fasten it down with some more Craig screws. I'm gonna make use of my clamp just to clamp it down nice and tight. Okay, first screws in. Now I find it easier to actually do the opposite sides as well, just to stop any movement as I work my way down. So that's nice and tight. And then we'll go across to the other side and do the same thing. There you have it, the bench is complete. I'm very happy with that. The structure is done. All that you need to do now is make it look pretty. The first thing that I like to do is fill these pocket holes. Now, you can use wood filler, it takes quite a while to dry. I actually like to use plugs. You get Craig plugs which fit in to match the hole size, or you can use the plug hole cutter. So what it does is it actually cuts your own plugs for you. Um, and the nice thing about that is you get to make it out of the same material that the project that you're working on. So if you've got any off-cut pieces, that way the grain structure matches up so much better and it's practically invisible once you sand it down. You'll see I've actually rounded the edge off quite a bit. It just really does stop that chipping out of the edges, especially on that grain edge there. Right, once you've got it sanded all down, you're happy you haven't got any sharp edges, any splinters or any burrs, it's now time to seal it. Now when sealing it, it's important to seal the underside of the feet. Because if it's going to be outside and open, that's the bit that's going to get wet. So you want to try and seal that off so the water doesn't penetrate all the way up through the grain. Okay, regarding for sealing, you can seal it to any color or stain or type that you like. I'm going for the fired earth range, really cool stuff. I'm going to go white on the underside and mahogany on top. Now I'm going to start with the white first. Now you'll notice I've flipped it upside down because these are all the components that are going to be white. It's much easier to work like this. Now you'll notice I haven't filled all these plug holes because it's on the underside of the bench, so there's no need. If you want to fill them, you're more than welcome to, but it does mean extra work. Do that top piece first, and straight away when you're working on the end grain, you'll see that paint suck into that grain immediately. So I put a bit of extra on there, allow it to really penetrate into that footing. Haha, -ha, my bench is coming to life. Let's flip that over whilst that's drying. We can start with the mahogany on the top. Now remember, we're gonna do at least two to three coats on the top. The more you do, just the more it's gonna actually bring out the darkness of the stain, and it's also gonna help prolong the life of the timber. 
Now in applying your sealer or your stain, remember always go with the direction of the grain. It just helps blend in with brush strokes. And if you are gonna be doing this outside, make sure you're not doing it in the sun. Especially this water-based sealer, it dries very quickly in the sun and you want it to dry a little bit slower, especially when you're applying the stain itself because you actually want it to blend in. Okay, the first coat is on, I'm gonna allow that to dry. Straight away you can see the contrast difference between a second and a third <laughs> coat. So guys, this DIY, it really was easy to do and you get to use your Craig jig. So, click on the link and it'll take you directly to the Builders Bundle page, allowing you to put all the items that I just used for this DIY into your basket, take it home and get started with your DIY. If you enjoyed this clip, like it, share it. You can also subscribe to the Builders Fan YouTube channel. There's a range of product reviews and DIYs just like this for you to be inspired, give it a go, and get it done.